This hack tip is brought to you by Full Sail University. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morris, and today we are checking out Wireshark and the Transmission Control Protocol Packets. Now today we are breaking down TCP, or Transmission Control Protocol for short, TCP, which runs in the layer 4 of the OSI model, and it runs on top of IP. So TCP basically makes sure that your data gets to where it's supposed to go in a reliable way so that it doesn't end up breaking up and destroying your entire transmission. So consider that IP is the pizza. This is gonna be a little weird, but follow me now. IP is the pizza, TCP is the pizza delivery guy or the delivery girl like me when I worked at Domino's Pizza, and she ensures that your pizza gets to you on time. Get it? Yeah, it kind of makes sense. So let's go ahead and check out a TCP header packet like the one I have showed up on my computer. Now the first part that you're going to see whenever you find a TCP header packet is all this information above. You don't really need to pay attention to the frame 4121, Ethernet 2, Internet Protocol version 4, we discussed that last week. Down here under this next tree is Transmission Control Protocol. So the first thing you're going to see under here is the source port. So this is going to be used to transmit the packet. And then under that, you have the destination port. So for my example, my port is 443. Now this is going to be the destination, which is the port to where the packet is going to be transmitted. Next up, you're going to see a thing called a sequence number, and that's going to be found down here, 496. So this is going to be a sequence of the TCP. This assures that part of the data stream isn't missing from the entire packet. It also identifies the TCP segment. Now the acknowledgement number is the sequence number for the next packet. So if I look at mine, the acknowledgement number on this is 4043, the relative ACK number, more on ACKs in a bit. Now, after that, you're going to see a bunch of different flags. These can include URG for urgent, ACH, PSH for push, RST for reset, SYN and FIN, FIN is finish, for all the different types of TCP packets that are available for it to send from one destination to another. So for example, in mine, if I scroll down just a little bit, I'll notice that I have a FIN at packet going on here. So you're going to see a bunch of zeros. You'll get down here to ACK Acknowledgement, and there's a one set for that. So you notice that this is going to be a packet that includes an acknowledgement. And down at the bottom, we have another one for FIN, which is set. So that means that it's also a finishing packet. Now, after this, we scroll down a little bit more, and we'll notice something called window size. So this value under here is 255. So the window size is the size of the TCP receiver bu buffer in bytes. Not bits, but bytes. Now after that you see checksum, and checksum ensures the contents are actually intact and legit, so there's nothing wrong with them. And under there you'll see urgent pointer, and this is if there's an URG flag on the actual packet. So this part is going to give you extra instructions about where the CPU should begin reading data in the packet and other optional info as well. Now after the break, I'm going to discuss a little bit more about the different kind of flags and ports and how you can actually understand which port a TCP header is using. More after the break. As you know, virtually every industry relies on software technology. Full Seal University, located in Winter Park, Florida, offers bachelor's degree programs that address the need for skilled tech professionals through a curriculum that blends code and theory in real-world experience. Offered on campus, the Software Development Bachelor's Degree Program teaches programming fundamentals through project-based coursework, allowing students to graduate with multiple completed software products. The Mobile Development Bachelor's Degree offered on campus and online teaches students how to develop apps and utilities through courses that cover both iOS and Android development. And the Web Design and Development Bachelor's Degree Program, also available on campus and online, teaches front-end design, back-end development, along with coding formats, programming languages, and so much more. All students have hands-on access to technology from day one. They receive a laptop computer at an institutional discount, along with relevant software and tools. To learn more about Full Sail's web and technology programs, visit fullsail.edu slash hacktip. We're back with Wireshark and TCP. 
So the transmission control protocol, this works by transmitting data on ports, obviously, because that would make sense, which range between port number one and port number 65,535. Ports number 1 through 1023 are called standard ports. So these are like port 80 for HTTP that falls within this category. And there's uh, several others, but I haven't memorized them all. Uh, port 1024 through 65535 are called ephemeral ports. So these are randomly selected whenever a device needs to basically find an open port. Both the destination and the client need to know what port the other one is listening on to be able to transmit data between them. So you kind of need to know each other's phone numbers pretty much. Oftentimes the source port will be chosen at random whenever a TCP sends a packet. Now TCP, TCP packets start with a handshake and this ensures that the host and the destination are up and ready to communicate. It checks the open port, it sends a sequence number so that the data pretty much stays in line. Now the host is going to be sending a SYN packet to the destination and then the destination will send a SYN ACK packet so it can send both flags at the same time and then the host will send back an ACK or acknowledge packet right back. Now during this handshake, the sequence number will go up by one each and every time. So the first acknowledgement packet will be number you know, 45 or whatever it might end up being. The next one after that would be 46, 47, and so on and so forth. And you can have hundreds of packets between one data transmit and the other. So lots and lots of packets going on. Now the TCP teardown, TCP, is the very last packet that's going to happen. This happens between the two devices before their communication is over, and it's signified by the fin flag. Yay! That's the very last packet that you'll see because fin equals finish. Now the host sends the destination a fin acknowledge packet, and then the destination sends the host an ack packet, and then a fin ack, and the host responds with an ack if that makes sense. So let's see if we can find a teardown packet header in our example on my computer. So if we jump down over here, and I just decided to throw up a whole bunch up here in the top window so you can see the differences. You can notice them right here. They're already named for you within Wireshark. It makes it super, super easy to find them. So you can see there's a sin, there's some ax, there's a sin acknowledge, there's a finish acknowledge, so here's a finish acknowledge. Okay, so when we hit this one, we can see that the source was 189, destination was 130. We can go down here and see the acknowledgement number, the header length, everything that you need to see is down here. And when we scroll down a bit, we'll find the flags. Flag is set to one for acknowledgement, flag is set to one for finish. So that is the very last packet that we'll see in there. And if I scroll down a little bit more, we'll find some other acknowledgements. There's a lot of acknowledgements going on. And I believe there was an RST, a reset one up here. Yeah, there we go. So for this one, I will go ahead and explain that a little bit. Now lastly, sometimes a TCP packet will need to send something called a reset or RST, as it would be called in the flag section. Now if a connection is halted all of a sudden by accident, the TCP packet will try to reset this flag altogether. And this will halt all traffic during the sequence and close down the entire packet. So it'll just be like, you're done. No more of this, talk to the hand, and it'll completely close it down. If I scroll down a little bit under here, you'll notice that now the flag is set to acknowledgement and reset. So you don't actually see a finish in this case, you just see a reset. Now I hope that explained a lot of what's going on with transmission control protocol packets. Obviously this is the next layer, so I'm hoping to go on and on with all the different layers. But of course, let me know what you think if you wanna see me explain more about Wireshark or if you're pretty much done with it and you feel like you're an expert now. Let me know, tips at hack5.org and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there reminding you to trust your technologists.